All right, UV layout. Now, there's nothing really new here as far as UV layout. You UV layout the same way that you did in lesson one. The difference here is uh, just just keep note that there's a big difference between environmental mapping and uh, static mesh or asset mapping. And that is the fact that this barrel uh, could appear like 20 times in a scene. Well, let's say if I make the metal a separate material and a separate texture, and the barrel a separate material and a separate texture, that would have two textures just for one barrel times 22. So that's a lot of textures in a scene. The house is one house. It could have like six or eight textures involved into it, but there's one house. So that's the difference between environmental mapping and asset mapping is the fact that uh, the number of assets always are more because you're going to be using this barrel over and over in the scene. If this was used in an in old town, um, I'm sure that every house would have a barrel to c collect rain. So we want to still utilize the space, however, uh, to get detail. Uh, in this case, I have these, the ring, the lid, and what I did, I combined all these three at or four assets together. And I did that so I can mirror them. Um, so here... I'm going to just edit, duplicate special, square box. And I'm going to put a negative number in here and hit apply. Now I have the same number of assets. But if you look at the UV space, nothing's really changed. Let's go over and highlight all objects. I still have this, and I still have this. You can see there's only three rings here and two lids, top and bottom. Uh, this is the top of one lid and the bottom of one lid, but they're mirrored on top of each other. So if I do something like this and I move this around, you can see that the UVs are moving here. Oops. Also, if I move this around, you can see that they're moving at the bottom. So let's say the barrel had some kind of insignia here. Well, it would appear at the bo top and bottom. All right, so that's how that works. It's a great way to utilize space. Now, take, exa take this for example. I could have squished this shell down and moved the tube shells over here, making it non uv mirrored. And that would have been correct also. I could have expanded these bands out so all bands were right here and there was no mirrored. Uh, the one thing I wanted to show you was the fact that you could mirror UVs and it's an option. Uh, the only difference here is mirrored UVs will not be able to bake textures later on. So I'm going to choose to have this barrel as an example of that. Okay. And I'm going to duplicate that barrel for a later lesson. And in that lesson, I'm going to have to have the UVs laid out differently. So here, I'm going to take full use of the space. Scale these down just a little bit. Move them down. And also I'm going to separate the shells out for uh, the top of the barrel. Now I'm going to run into space issues because the, the second top is a little bit bigger. As you can see, I now have clashed UVs or um, stacked UVs right here. So I'm going to have to take these two shells and make them just a little, just a little bit smaller, just so I can fit that secondary shell in there. 
I haven't lost a whole lot of space with this. So now we have uh, a non-mirrored layout and a mirrored layout. In the next lesson, uh, in the next chapter, what we're going to do is kind of look at that, that concept. But first, let's get some textures on the barrel itself, in, and we'll start that in the next video.